Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. On today's tutorial, I will demonstrate how to make this asymmetrical monostrap single sleeve blouse. Hi, my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 Clothing Tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever i upload a new video so now let's get right into the tutorial thank you i'll be working with the following items tape measure pins a pair of fabric scissors a pair of paper scissors tracing wheel water erasable fabric pencil Ideally, a pencil should be used to draft a pattern, but for tutorial purpose, I'll be using this marker pen, calculator, rulers and curves, my fabric of choice, which is this two years of flowered crepe, pattern paper. I'll be working with the following measurements, bust circumference 39 inches, waist circumference 35 inches hip circumference 43 inches shoulder to waistline 18 inches blouse length 26 inches sleeve length 23 inches around elbow measurement 13 inches around wrist measurement 10 inches so I have here my pattern paper, which I've already laid out on the table, and I've drawn a margin of 2 inches at the top and on the left hand side of the paper. I will now go ahead and draw a rectangular box that will contain both the front and the back patterns since both of them will be drafted within this rectangular box. To know the width of this rectangular box, I will look for the largest circumference between my bust, my waist and my hip circumference measurements. And in this case, it is the hip circumference measurement which is 43 inches. So I will calculate the hip circumference divided by 2 plus extra 3 inches for ease and this is 43 divided by 2 plus 3 inches and this is equal to 24.5 inches. I will measure and mark 24.5 inches like this. And I will draw a vertical line. As for the length of the rectangular box, the length will be the blouse length which is 26 inches. So I will go ahead to measure and mark 26 inches like this. And I will draw a horizontal line. Next, I will divide the rectangular box into two equal halves vertically, like this. This side will be the center back, while this other side will be the center front. Next, I will measure and mark one inch for the back shoulder line. I will draw a horizontal line across. I will also measure and mark 1.5 inches for the front shoulder line. I will draw a horizontal line across. For the arm hole depth, I will use the formula bust circumference divided by 6 plus 1.5 and this is 39 divided by 6 plus 1.5 and this is equal to 8 inches. From the back shoulder line, I will measure and mark 8 inches like this. I 
I will draw a horizontal line across to the center back and to the center front. This line is the armhole line. The shoulder to waistline measurement is 18 inches. From the upper starting line, I will measure and mark 18 inches. I will draw a horizontal line to the center back, also to the center front. For the back neckline, I will use 3 inches by 1 inch. Using a French curve, I will go ahead and draw the back neckline curve like this. For the front neckline, I will use a value of 3 inches by 3 inches. Using a French curve, I will go ahead and draw the front neckline curve like this. Next, I will divide the shoulder to shoulder measurement by 2 and this is 16 inches divided by 2 and this is equal to 8 inches. On the back shoulder line, I will measure and mark 8 inches, starting from the center back. On the front shoulder line, I will measure and mark 8 inches, starting from the center front. I will connect these two points together to give me the slanted shoulder line for the front. I will also connect these two points together to give me the slanted shoulder line for the back. On the arm all line, I will measure and mark 8 inches starting from the center back and also the center front. This 8 inches is the shoulder to shoulder measurement divided by 2. I will connect these points together like this using broken lines. Next, I will calculate the bust circumference plus 4 inches for E divided by 4 and this is 39 plus 4 divided by 4 and this is equal to 10.75 inches. On the arm all line, I will measure and mark 10.75 inches starting from the center back and also the center front. On the back pattern, I will locate and mark the middle point on the broken line. From the middle point, I will go in by half an inch. I will now connect these two points together like this with my ruler. I will also connect these two lower points together with my French curve like this. On the front pattern, I will go up by 3 inches from the armhole line on the broken line. From this point, I will go in by 3 quarter of an inch. I will now connect these two points together like this. I will also connect these two lower points together with a French curve like this. Next, I will calculate my waist circumference plus 4 inches for E divided by 4 and this is 35 plus 4 divided by 4 and this is equal to 9.75 On the waistline, I will measure and mark 9.75 inches like this starting from the center back and also the center front. Next, I will calculate my hip circumference plus 4 inches for E divided by 4 and this is 43 plus 4 divided by 4 and this is equal to 11.75 inches. At the end of the pattern, I will measure and mark 11.75 inches starting from the center back and the center front. I will now connect these points together to give me the side seams of the back and the front patterns. At the side seams, I will measure and mark 1 inch above the aim.
At the center back and center front, I will come down by 1 inch below the end. I will now curve the ends of the back and the front patterns like this. I will now cut out the back and the front patterns. Since the design of the blouse is asymmetrical, I will cut out the full front and the full back patterns. I have gone ahead to cut out the full back and the full front patterns. This is the full front pattern. These are the right and the left sides of the, of the pattern and this is the center front line. On the left side, I will measure and mark 1 inch from the neck point on the shoulder line. From the shoulder tip on the right side, I will come down by 3 inches. You can also interchange, interchange this. I will connect these two points together like this to create the monostrap design detail on the blouse. I will trim it off. I will draw out the waistline. So from the neck point, I will measure and mark the shoulder to waistline measurements, which in my own case is 18 inches. I will now draw out the waistline. This is the back pattern. I have drawn out the center back line. I have also indicated the right and the left sides of the back pattern. From the shoulder tip on the right side, I will measure and mark 3 inches. From the neck point on the left side, I will measure and mark 1 inch. I will use the monostrap neckline of the front neckline as a guide to draw the back monostrap neckline like this. I will cut it out. Next, I will draw out the neckline facing and the armhole facing for both the front and the back patterns. The facings are about 2 inches wide. I will now trace out the neckline facing and the armhole facing onto another paper. I will cut them out. I will also label the facing pieces so as to avoid confusion when sewing the pieces together. I will also use arrows to indicate the sides that will be sewn to the necklines and the arm holes. This is the front pattern and this is the waistline. On the shoulders, I will locate and mark the middle point. I will now connect the middle point that I marked on the shoulders to the side on the waistline using this hip curve ruler. You can also use a straightly ruler. I will now slash it open. I will place it on another pattern paper underneath it. Then I will secure it in place with my pins. I opened up the shoulders by 3 inches. I will now sellotape it in place. 
on the original blouse design there is a pleat on the shoulders hence the reason for adding extra fullness at the shoulders I will trim off the excess pattern paper. I will now go ahead and draft the basic sleeve pattern. So I have here this pattern paper which I've already folded into two equal halves. I will draw a horizontal starting line about two inches away from the top edge of the paper. The sleeve length that I'm working with is 23 inches. So I'll go ahead to measure and mark 23 inches like this. I will draw a horizontal line across. This is the aim of the sleeve. Next, I will calculate the cap height using the formula bust circumference divided by 12 plus 1.5 and this is 39 divided by 12 plus 1.5 and this is equal to 4.75 inches. From the upper starting line, I will measure and mark 4.75 inches like this. I will draw a horizontal line across. This line is the cap height line. I will locate and mark the middle points between the cap height line and the end of the sleeve. This line will be the elbow line. You can also measure the elbow line directly on the person you are making the outfit for. I will draw a horizontal line across. Next, I will calculate the arm hole depth using the formula bust circumference divided by 6 plus 1.5 and this is 39 divided by 6 plus 1.5 and this is equal to 8 inches. So on the cap height line, I will go ahead to measure and mark 8 inches like this. I will connect these two points together with a slanted line like this. I will divide the slanted line into four equal sections like this. From the first middle point, I will go up by half an inch. From the second middle point, I will come down by half an inch. I will now connect the points together with my French curve like this using the half inch points as a guide. This armhole curve is for the back of the sleeve. To create the armhole curve for the front, I will come down from the middle point by half an inch like this. I will now draw a new armhole curve for the front using the half an inch as a guide. Using a tracing wheel, I will transfer the new front arm old curve to the other side of the pattern paper like this. The around elbow measurement is 13 inches. So I will divide this by 2 and this gave me a value of 6.5 inches. On the elbow line, I will go ahead to measure and mark 6.5 inches like this. The around wrist measurement is 10 inches. So I will divide this 10 inches by 2 and this is equal to 5 inches. At the end of the sleeve, I will measure and mark 5 inches like this. I will now connect the points together like this using a ruler. Using a tracing wheel, I will trace out the sleeve to the other side of the paper like this. I will open up the paper and I will make the tracing border using my ruler, marker pen and French curve.
Then I will cut out the sleeve pattern. Next, I will measure and mark 3 inches above the aim of the sleeve and I will draw a horizontal line across. This is the cuff or the band of the sleeve. I will cut it out. I will straighten the sides of the cuff and I will trim off the excess. This is the band or the cuff of the sleeve. I will divide the main sleeve pattern into four equal sections like this. The sleeve will be sewn to this side of the front armhole and the armhole is incomplete. So I will measure this incomplete armhole and this gave me a value of 7 inches. So on the sleeve, the sleeve has been folded back into two. I will measure and mark 7 inches on the sleeve armhole starting from the base of the armhole curve. I will draw a horizontal line across and I will trim off the excess pattern paper. I will now slash the sleeve pattern like this but I will not cut it all the way through. On this new pattern paper, I have already drawn a middle line. I will go ahead and spread out the sleeve pattern like this using the middle line as a guide. I will spread out the middle part of the sleeve one inch away from the middle line on both sides. I will pin the pieces in place. Then I will spread the two remaining parts by two inches. I will secure them in place with my pins. From the middle point at the aim, I will come down by one inch. I will now redraw the aim of the sleeve. I will cut out the sleeve pattern. I will remove the old pattern from the new one. There is going to be an elastic at the upper part of the sleeve. So I have to add some extra fullness to the upper part of the sleeve. So I will slide the sleeve along the middle line, but I won't cut it all the way through. I will place another pattern paper underneath it. And I will open up the upper part by about 4 inches. I will cello tape it in place. I will trim off the excess pattern paper. I will label the front and the back of the sleeve. This is the cuff or the band at the end of the sleeve. So these are all the pattern pieces needed to make the asymmetrical monostrap single sleeve blouse. Stay tuned for my next tutorial where I will cut and sew these pattern pieces on my fabric. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends who are, who are interested in sewing, and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.